Stirring, stirring. That's what I'll be doing on my next brew day because today I'm building a stirrer for my hot liquor tank in my brewing setup. Now, two weeks ago, I put together a video showing different temperatures inside the hot liquor tank of my 3V Herms setup. The trouble was, at the top of the water, it was really hot and down near the bottom where my sparge water comes out it was getting really cold about 20 degrees celsius difference so i thought i need to stir this up and get more homogeneous uh, temperature distribution throughout my hot liquor tank and i set about ordering parts to build my own hot liquor tank stirrer there are a lot of designs out there but this video is about how i've built mine all the parts have arrived now so i'm going to be putting it together this afternoon all right let's get started First of all, I want to show you all of the parts I'm going to use for this build and we'll start with the motor and gearbox combination. So here's my motor and gearbox together here. I'll hold it up close and focus on it. It says it's 12 volts and 200 RPM. If it just focuses, there we go. I think 200 RPM is going to be good because that means it's spinning around about three times a second or a bit more when it's running at full speed. And uh, that's going to be quick enough, hopefully, that it gets a bit of movement in there, but without like spraying and splashing stuff around. So, so we'll see how that goes. Next up, I have this stirrer here that I purchased off eBay as well. These are made for laboratory situations. It's made of Teflon coating, so it's, it doesn't react with anything and it's good for high temperatures and it's got this little front bit on it that can bend out as well but I don't really need that feature. Now the trouble was that this has a 7mm shaft on it which is a bit odd and the motor's got a 6mm shaft but thankfully eBay to the rescue they sell these little coupling things here. I can just show you inside there without getting too much glare. It's just got a 6mm hole in one end, 7mm hole in the other end and a bundle of grub screws so you can couple two shafts together. It's pretty cheap too. That's all going to go together inside an enclosure. This is an LP35F from Polycase. You can get these CNC, but in this case I'll just use my tools and cut it up as I see fit. And it's pretty cool because it's got these little mounting flanges on the bottom. And uh, that means I'll be able to mount it to my lid of my hot liquor tank uh, while it's running. So that'll be really cool too. And we use these in our font snakes. So that's, that's where I got these enclosure idea from. And that's going to be run from a 12 volt power adapter and just a regular one, low voltage, safe, and of course a switch as well so that we can turn it on and off nicely without having to turn it on and off at the wall. Alrighty, so I'll get started cutting out my enclosure. This motor and gearbox is going to fit down in the middle. Now on the front of it I'm going to have my nice on off switch mounted somewhere in this wall and then on the back I'll have my power jack going in there so the power can come in out of the way on the back. So those wires are all soldered in now. We've got our power coming in. Uh, we've switched our positive, not that it matters, all going to the motor. And I'll just drop this guy in nicely in the middle there. I'm just screwing it together now. It fits quite nicely. Plenty of spare space. I guess the wires are a bit bunched up, but it'll be fine. I missed this part while I was putting it together. Uh, when I hooked it up and tested it on my hot liquor tank and it got very hot I noticed that some oil had started dripping out through the shaft a little bit and that would get into my brewing water So that'd be no good. So in this step I'm going to take apart the gearbox and empty out all of that oil as best as I can Here is the inside of my gearbox and you can see all of the gears in there. They're just covered in some kind of thick oil or grease 
and I'm going to try and clean that off by washing it in some detergent. Just taking out the pieces bit by bit, try to clean them up in a tissue here to get off all of that thick gunky oil and then I'll finish them off inside my detergent. Okay so that's the fourth gear he's all pretty clean now and that's the main one because this is where all the oil was leaking out from underneath here and of course I've got to clean out this here and get all the oil off here as much as I can and that's also where all the oil is leaking down through there all clean. I have finished cleaning off all the gears now and uh, I'm going to put this gearbox back together okay now I've got to drill my precious lid and put some holes in it so that I can mount this on top alright that's the lid drilled and uh, I'm going to put this on with some of these bolts that I had laying around, I think they're M4 and uh, I'm going to need to make a spacer that, that holds this nicely above the lid here so uh, I'm going to design something in CAD and I'll 3D print that out uh, what I've got is a flat surface where it's going to mount on top and then a bit of a curve here because my lid isn't entirely flat and if I had this flat the dome of the lid would mean it wouldn't sit properly so just having this curve here helps it to to sit more securely as well and I'll just throw you, show you a 3D render of that that's that's kind of what it's going to look like I'll have two of these and that's going to sit on top of my of my lid here is the 3D printer about to begin the print job Awesome, and here is the end product. Two lovely orange spaces. Okay, so fast forward a little. I've printed off these two plastic spaces that are going to go under here. I've attached on my shaft coupler onto the motor. And there we go. We have firmly attached our stirrer to the lid. Okay, back in the brew room and I've just got to work out what length I'm going to have to chop off this stirrer in order to make it fit. So and I'll probably just have it about there I think. And So I'll put a mark where my fingers are and that's going to line up pretty well with the shaft coupler. Okay, now here we are in the tool shed. I've put a mark on where I've got to slice it and I'm going to use a hacksaw but I can't hold the camera and hacksaw at the same time so we're just going to cut ahead to the bit where this is already done. Alright, so here it is. That's the stirrer mounted on top of my lid there. Put it into the hot liquor tank. Lovely. Like a dream. Just sits in there, sort of around the side near the heater there and behind the Herms coil. It can actually sit anywhere around behind the Herms coil. So Alright, my build is complete. And today I'm in the brew room and it's time to test out this hot liquor tank stirrer to see if it works. I've got it here with me and honestly, I've got to say, I'm starting to have second thoughts about this little stirrer on the edge here because it's kind of small and it doesn't spin that fast. Is it going to be enough to homogenize all the temperatures in there? There's only one way to find out. Let's get started. Step one, we got to fill her up with cold water. Step two, got to put on the lid and start the stirrer. And step three is to turn on the heater and set it up to strike temperature. I'm setting it at 72 degrees. And now we're heating. Okay, here you can see we've reached 72.8 degrees Celsius, which is 0.8 above our set point. Now previously without the stirrer in the hot liquor tank, we were getting around 1.7 degrees above our set point, and we'll see how high it goes this time before it starts going back down. And there we have it, so it's gone back down 0.1, that means our overshoot was only 0.8 degrees Celsius this time. So that's a 
great improvement uh, over what we had before without any stirring going on in there. Okay, now here is the real test that we've been working towards. I'm going to turn off the stirrer, take off the lid, and we're going to see how well this heat has been homogenized around in the hot liquor tank. Now, last time we had huge temperature variations here. We should see around 72 degrees because I'm measuring right at the end of our temperature probe. And we're still at 72.4 there. There we go, about 73 degrees Celsius. And if I move this one down now, the bottom near where my sparge water comes out, looks like we're about 74, 75 degrees there. So last time we had about a 20 degree difference. We were 20 degrees below the temperature we set at. And here we're about two degrees above. So that's an order of magnitude better. Just having that slight stirring that was going on down here. And uh, you wouldn't even see the movement in the water here, but it's just enough to keep everything moving inside. And I'm very happy with that. Awesome. So this little thing here, was able to not only improve the response of my temperature controller, but also to homogenize the temperatures throughout my hot liquor tank, which is great because anytime I want to add water to my mash, say for strike water or infusions or for sparging at the end, uh, I'm going to be putting in water at exactly the temperature or very close to the temperature that it says on my temperature controller, all thanks to this little stirrer here. So this is a useful little kit that you can build yourself. I'm going to put down the links at the bottom of this video for anyone that wants to build their own and add this to their own hot liquor tank. So till next time, Happy brewing.